Hello everyone, this is Jack and welcome back to a brand new video of Ghost Street Phantom Detective episode 15. So today I'm going to re-record this because I got a call right at the end of the episode, I couldn't finish the episode. So I have to redo it all over again. Plus, the recording was screwed up, so yeah, I better restart it and well, let's get down to it, shall we? Episode 15, 2.55 AM, we're ready to go. Um. So for those who don't know, we actually uh, went to the park last episode and uh, we learned a bunch of new things. And today, 10 years ago, a man named Cecil, Cecil took a little, girl's, a, a little girl named Lynn hostage and then was killed by a meteorite fragment. Tonight, a man named Cecil met a detective named Lynn at a junkyard on the edge of town and then was killed by a bullet. Oh wow. What a story, but the scene I find waiting for me on the other end of the phone line feels like uh, the final nail in the coffins, the coffin of my lost memory. Why? And yes, it's us. Our body is actually pointing a gun to Mr. Cabanella here. I see myself. And that's messed up, so I already saw all that, but uh, to me, imagine the surprise that was to see myself standing there with a point, uh, gun pointed at my face, at uh, Mr. Cabanello's face. There you are, Commander Sith. Finally. Cecil, where have you been, my good man? We've been looking everywhere for you. I had a little unfinished business to take care of. I didn't think it would take this long. What about your people? They sure went out of their way to mess me up. I say, I believe we fulfilled every one of your conditions in our little deal. What right do you have to complain about anything outside our bargain? We can talk about that when we get together. This will be our last communication by telephone. We'll arrive in one hour. I took. Uh, I look forward to seeing to seeing you, Cecil. I'm sorry about the reading. Even though I record, I already recorded the episode. It was yesterday, so I, I, I have to reread everything. I can't use my memory right now. Um, the dawn is approaching. The darkness surrounding my own mystery is deep, but I know it's always darkest before dawn. True that. Two words are never sp been spoken. Mm, yes, we are nearing the final stages of our little deal, my good man. Yes, sir. All preparations are complete, sir. And we just had a report, sir. Lights have been spotted, sir. Have they? Have they now? By all means, let me have a look. At this point, I was saying that there was probably going to be a submarine or sub of some sort. They aren't prop uh, in a normal house, they are actually in a submarine. I actually said that before even knowing what's, what is going on. Yes, we're very close. We will now disconnect from the communication cable and have no service until we arrive, sir. That's when I actually noticed and confirmed that it was true. Very well. And uh, then the scene um, starts to happen. Yeah, that... All, everything I've seen so far points to that being a oh come on oh emulator come on don't be silly see that is awesome you wouldn't have guessed you would never guess that was the case but it looks like to me that's going to be the final level so take a good look i don't know the final level i'm just throwing ideas up in the air now nice try inspector cabanella but you could never stop me. So long, sucker. Okay, we have to go back in time for sure to stop this madness. Alright, uh, so what do you have to say? So, th that submarine guy and his people have a deal going on with me, do they? If that's the case, they're, they're, they probably aren't the, the, only, uh, the, the ones who killed me, right? Anyway, there's definitely something being uh, behind the inspector's death. I think I'd better talk to him. We are going to talk to Inspector Cabanella, who's dead. Poor guy. 
Dot dot dot. Hey, do you think you could wake up for me? That's a weird question. Dot dot dot. Oh boy, still unconscious. Hey, I guess he hadn't. He hasn't been dead for very long then. I'll just go ahead and go back to four minutes before his death. I'm a little nervous about what I might see there, though. But if that's uh, where I'm going to find my answers, I can run away from it. Let's go back and understand what the heck is going on. What the heck is going on and we see our body. How is that possible? We were dead. Someone possessing our body. Once the criminal gets the punishment he deserves, the hostage will go free. Carry out the execution immediately and wait for our call. So Inspector Cabanella was being blackmailed, was was being uh, forced to do that, so he's still a good guy. That's a good boy. Gee, a hostage sure is a handy is a handy thing. It gives me complete control over the top police inspector in this con in the country. Yeah, that's the bad thing about being the top one, you know. <sighs> What's the matter? All those broken bones uh, smart a bit? What's it like to feel pain? Does it make you feel alive? Why are you doing this? Now, this I am. Um, is that kind? Is that any kind of question for a top inspector to ask? Isn't it obvious? Revenge, of course. Revenge on all people, all the people who saw my life away ten years ago. Don't be ridiculous. It was a me meteorite that stole your life, or have you forgotten that? Wrong. I was murdered. By all of you! Are you serious now? Are you serious? Detect Detective Joe... The oh, I didn't read that, sorry. Lynn, that girl who, had, who was right there where I was running. Lynn, she was just as an innocent girl playing in the park. If that brat hadn't been there, I never would have uh, uh, thought of taking her hostage. That's the most self-centered garbage I've ever heard. And finally you, Inspector Cabanella. Me? If you hadn't done what you did, I never would have pointed a gun at that kid. What did you do? That was weird. You were so proud of your spotless record, and my case was the one bolt on it, wasn't it? And only two people know the real truth. Me and Detective Joe. Dot dot dot. I bet tonight's execution will be quite a relief to you, won't it? One of the people who know about the stain on your spotless... Uh, on your spotless record. It doesn't, there's no spotless, but... Uh, will disappear for good. That's why you didn't help him escape from prison. That's the kind of guy you are. <sighs> I got nothing to say to you. You never listen anyway. Points a gun at him. Shoots him. He's dead. But he can't be dead, so... He comes back. And that's the scariest... Stuff I've ever seen in my life. Not quite, but really close. You got! Now then, Inspector, time to make a big red stain on your spotless white coat. Bang! As easy as that. This was another condition of my deal. To wipe out everybody who knew about Tempsic. Boom. Got shot. Died. Oh lord. Revenge? That's what I'm up to. None of this makes any sense. Hey man, mind telling me what's going on? Inspector Cabanella, he, he's awake. My head is spinning, baby. 
And I... Am I to understand that Cabanella character who just got shot is me? Um, that's right. Then you're... You're supposed to be this scoundrel there who just shot me. Um, I guess so. But you could be, could you? Huh? After all, the guy in the red suit just walked out the door, right? So... Who are you? I guess I just have to fix it. I'm not that Sissel guy. Uh, I'm somebody who's searching for himself. Uh, that's why I'm here to save you. At the very, uh, at the very least, uh, you have information about that guy in red. Information I need. So you came on a rescue mission, now, did you? Uh, nothing like the sound of that, baby. Because uh, there is, there is a very important life here somewhere, a life valuable to this nation. Okay, so do your thing, baby. That's so self-centered, but then, uh, yeah, you'll understand that later. How nice of you. Let's see, trick time. One thing's for sure. Ooh, look at him. There's that something emanating from his body. It, is it really the sign of having special powers of the dead? That's weird. But I can't connect to him in any way. So one thing uh, that I noticed, if, if you make any kind of noise, it's quite obvious, and I like this scene, so that's why I put this here. What, what is going on? I've never seen the ghost world like this. So you're here, are you? He sensed my presence. I noticed you. You think you can stop me, do you? Oh. I don't know why you're wearing my face, but you might as well give up now. I control everything. Damn it! And he tries to shoot him, and uh, death is pretty much set. Everything, including the life of the of this police inspector in white. Give me that gun. Wait! Don't shoot! Bang. So basically, that's what happens if you make noise in front of him. I thought I'd show that up because that was quite creepy. This other me knows the power of the dead as well. Who wouldn't notice what you just did? You were practically sh shouting, look at me, baby! Yeah. It looks like it might be hard to save your un you under the circumstances. I guess I can't use my powers right in front of him like that. I guess I'd better rewind the clock again and see if I can pick up an, uh, any other clues. And that's what we're going to do. Now the thing is, we can't do anything. It's, it's impossible to do whatever we're going to do. We cannot save this guy. We can, however, investigate further down below. We have to wait for him to hit the, the kettle down. We can read the conversation again, but basically now he's get, he gets hang, angry and we can escape from that. We can go down. And down we notice that the room is quite in bad shape. Look at this place. Oh gosh. What happened here? And um... Yeah, that's an important part. What in the world happened here? Thing I'm starting to remember. Something bad happened here. And now... There's another death, a line hidden there. What? Another death? Didn't I tell you from the start? Didn't I say there was, there was a very important life valuable to the nation here? I thought you were talking about you. Ugh. I'm just a crazy character in a white coat, baby. That's true. There is someone. And do you remember that bird? Yeah, that pigeon? Oh yeah, we already know who it is. Hey, come to think of it, where is that old pigeon guy? Exactly. So we are going to go down and try to... Um, so if, if you notice, you can still move this, but... Well, the rails are broken, so... It's gonna fall. Now, next step is to try to reach and open the box, because that box, while it opens, makes enough weight for it to, 
to go down. And we can now reach the dead person down there, which is... Hmm, excuse me. Dot, dot, dot. Are you awake? Of course! I never sleep during our uh, work hours. Professor, do you recognize me? There's only one crazy character in a white coat that I know of. He hasn't lost his memory. I'm not the type who likes to, uh, losing things. But never mind that. Cabanella is quite a surprising guest. It's quite a, this is quite a surprising guest you brought with you. Pretending like he didn't just blow up the place. Well, what are you talking about? Oh, this is a different guy. I'm just uh, his guest. I, uh, and I'm his guest, actually. Uh, sh uh, said that he came to rescue me. Unlike you, my sharp friend, he still hasn't uh, gotten his memory back. Hmm. Pitiful. Ouch, that hurts. Anyway, and now we'll be going back to four minutes before our, your death. In order to change your fate, that is. Hmm. Uh, aren't we already in the past, man? Uh, we can go back even further. I've done it before, and that's a really cool mechanic. I still don't see a path to saving Spectre Cabanella, but if we go back further, maybe uh, I'll find a lead. Maybe saving the situation, not having that place blow up or something. Uh, that's, that's my thought. At least, at the time, I thought that. Maybe pre prevent explosion would be a good thing. We will see what happens, how they died. How this dude died. How many times do I have to tell you, Professor, this place is dangerous? Don't be a f don't be a daft, I can't leave now. He's, uh, com he's completely dead, but just as I thought, I'm getting a reading. Here we go. Signal. This uh, this is the source of a of his power. If I remove it, he's not dead. He's just not there. The true form of the manipulator isn't something you can detect. It's a spirit. Hmm, ridiculous. <laughs> So you figured it all out, huh? And he wakes up. And that's the scariest waking up ever. I really love the animations in this game. You're a clever man, Inspector Cabanella. So, it's really true? You're, you're... I wasted a lot of time tonight because of you, Inspector. But it's all just like you said. I died ten years ago. This body is just a vessel and a shell. I control everything. This shell, people. Just like I controlled the Justice Minister and Lynn. So it's true. You were manipulating my baby all at that time. You made her shoot your shell. But why? Why would you do some? Uh, why would you do a thing like that? To create conclusive evidence, you know, on that security tape. Now she's a murderer too. She'll be suffering just like Joe did. Ha ha ha! Evil Sissel. Now then, Professor, I am afraid it's time for you to die. I don't have any grudge against you. I. Uh, I'm even grateful uh, to you. So yeah, why don't you just let me live then? I'll be leaving this country forever tonight, but before I do, I need to erase all evidence uh, that these powers of mine exist. Along with the contraption in this room. <laughs> so there was a meaning for the contraption. It was actually meant to be a reproduction of what happened. They tried to save Joe. Um, this time the thing will work the way it was meant to work, uh, the way it was meant to, and all, uh, and it all, it'll all be over, sorry. Cupid won't turn this time, he'll shoot his little arrow, um, this way. 
So right now, I thought I have to turn the guy. Um, I, I like, I mean, do exactly what he did to the contraption. Turning Cupid or the other way around. Professor, look out! And then jumps and boom. It's the end of the game. Game over. Friends, go back home. Now, Cabanella is not dead, he's just really, really injured. And looks like Sizzle doesn't have even have a scratch. Dynamite, hey, when the devil did he put that air? Uh, he blended all out tonight. Having my baby shoot him, having his corpse disappear, his corpse disappear. Yes, remember this guy, that medical examiner, remember him? He was the a complete and utter imposter. <coughs> cough, cough. He said he was going to take the corpse back to the lab, but he'd already made a deal with the manipulator to meet him and give him the body back. But I wasn't going to let that happen, baby. You saw through their plan, hey? I noticed right away the medical examiner didn't know the first thing about examining a body. I knew he was a fake, so I tracked him down and brought him, brought him off. Brought him off? I had him smuggle the corpse to this room. And that's when... I thought we were... Uh, I thought we could find the source of his power, of course, never. In my wildest dreams did I think his, uh, his abilities were powers of the dead. So that is the reason why uh, Inspector Gabanella, in, in episode 13, if I'm not mistaken, uh, ran, to, uh, ran outside of the minister's office. It was to check on that body, to make sure he could tr transmit uh, that kind of information to a uh, pigeon guy here. Anyway, there isn't much time. He's leaving the country before dawn. And I'm going to follow him, of course, after I save you two. But something's been nagging my, at my back, at the back of my mind. I remember that what Ray said to me tonight. He said that spirits cease to exist when the day breaks. But if that's true, how could a spirit from 10 years ago still be there, still be here? No time for thinking now, baby. That action is the name of the game. No, it's actually Ghost Ring. Work your magic and take us back, even further into the past. And that's what we're going to do. This episode is going to be long. I expect it to be at least one hour long, but as you can see from the video, maybe it isn't. So what we're going to do first uh, um, <clears throat> is trying to investigate a little bit around everything here. We can't do much. But there's here a door that can open. But this place is interesting. Uh, it's no use, I can't open it. <clears throat> Could the fact that the professor is standing on it have anything to do with it? I may look sm uh, small, but I'm pretty heavy set. Because you have all that machinery and all that. He sounds so proud of that fact, though. The uh, two. Uh, this door, such a pity, it's too bad it doesn't open downwards. Sometimes life can be so hard. Uh, wouldn't you agree, professor? Yeah, that's why we're both dead. Mm, a door that opens downwards, hey? So that's uh, kind of a um, way for us to un understand that. Oh, there's a commotion down there. See, rats? You can listen to those rats. Upstairs you can't go. And uh, there's not much here for us to check. So that's the time where uh, Sissel wakes up. Hmm, <laughs> ridiculous. Well, yeah. So you found out and... Yada yada. You're smart, Inspector Cabanella. And, uh... That's pretty much the conversation that's going on now. I was right. Just like you said. And you have to wait here. Even though you can investigate all this, you, there's nothing you can do with them. Basically, what I'm, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is put Sissel here. Okay. <clears throat> now then, Professor. It's time for you to die. 
I'll be living this country forever tonight, but before I do, I need to erase all evidence of these powers of mine, that the spars of mine exist. Along with the contraption in this room. Okay. Thoughts. As you perhaps have already noticed, time is running out, baby. Yeah, no perhaps about, the, about it, I know. Uh, but, you know, there aren't a whole lot of things I can use uh, my ghost tricks on in here. It looks like it's all over. Unless we find another path, I'm sort of at the deadlock here. Sissel. I, I, I know that voice. Help me. Where are you? Find me. Before I'm carried away. Now, I got stuck in this part. Uh, and I'll explain how simple it is. Hmm? What's with the frill sounding call for help? He's here somewhere. A friend of yours? Yup, a little guy that looks a little fragile but has a strength that would surprise you. Well, he's asking to you to find him. Be and before he's carried away, no less. But I'm almost out of time. Should I look for him? Yes, so you have to drag the camera all the way down here. A leaf appears. Sissel! Here I am! Oh, hey, it's... Missile! What are you doing here? There. Um, do you really have to ask? Seriously, are you really going there? Um, no, that's okay, never mind. Anyway, uh, I need your powers. You Will you help me out? Of course! Here, let me come join you. And, uh, well, <laughs> yeah. Hi. So, uh, if you don't do that, uh, the leaf just goes and uh, buy Missile. Okay, here I am, Sissel. I forgot about uh, the fact that uh, Missile was in a leaf, and I never thought that the leaf would actually travel down the river here in such an... Well, one of the, 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 um, the little uh, uh, hints that Cabanella says during a conversation if we don't do this is uh, he refers to the fact that we need to look at each corner. And this is one of the corners, so yeah. Uh, now, maybe things will flow in a new direction. See, get that? Even though the flow of the sewers is a little bit stinky. Haha, <laughs> flow. Now, I can use... Um, oops. Uh, doggy to do work. So, the idea is to bring him all the way over here. And as you can see, there's two stairs here. You can switch them out. Also, take note that there's a something that looks like a uh, the, the door there in a smaller size. Those squeaky guys are making a fuss about something. Sissel, my animal instincts are starting to surfa surface. If you if you mean you want to chase them, I think you have to be a, a, a light to do that. Hmm. There is uh, must uh, uh, there must be a, some kind of rat fest in that trash can, rat feast in that trash can. Those uh, things usually make a bigger commotion than that. A bigger commotion, hey? Because the rat cannot reach. So, oops! No, 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 no! no. We have to be fast about this. Swap those. The rats will come in. Yes, I said the rats will come in. You'll see what I mean now. Cheebers! Now, there's a trick. Uh, when an object looks like something else, it doesn't need, for example, that um, piece there. It, it looks flat, right? But if it's on the side, it looks like a wheel. We have a tire there, which we can trade. We'll, you'll see that mechanic. That's really cool. Now, that's what I'd call uh, some proper commotion. Yeah, so they're making the trash can dance. Truth be told, uh, I feel a bit like dancing my s now myself. It's getting harder and harder to hold my wild instincts back. What a dangerous bunch. <laughs> I love this one. Uh, okay, see? Now. As you can see, it looks like a tire. We have a tire here. We can switch them around. Because we can't reach the, the gate from down here. 
It's a bit higher now, so we can easily cancel. Oh, I, I, I have to go back. It will fall. And now I can just move there. It's not the same shape, so I can't swap it anymore. Let's wait for it to stop. And then it looks exactly like the door. So let's swap them. And we save the situation. Imagine how much time I pass looking for that solution. It's, uh, it's that simple. Yeah, but the problem was finding um, a missile. That's the only problem I had. Because from then on, it was quite easy to understand. The puzzle is quite simple. Sorry, little pigeon. Your mister is dead, and your broken bones. As for you, Inspector, I have a little job for you. I can't move. I think I have four or five broken bones. Uh, I don't mind. It won't prevent me from manipulating you. It might make it might make it hurt a little bit when I move you, though. Uh, quite a bit, actually. Damn you! There's some, uh, harsh language, but it's not that bad, I guess. And we save the situation! I can't believe it! Oops, my mouse is everywhere. You look, uh, you lot actually pull it off! Sorry, Inspector Cabanella. I couldn't do anything to help you. And uh, there I am, a poor broken hip and arms and legs. Hip of arms and legs. But no matter, I enjoyed the show. The magic disappearing act, that is. Nothing like it, baby. Yeah, except, unlike a normal magic trick, I'm the one that managed to vanish without a trace here. So not the magician. <laughs> Fate adverted for this man. Now we have to save Inspector Cabanella. I know I have to. What's the matter? You look like you'd rather be dead, not that you aren't. I was just remembering the fact that right about now, the real me is giving the poor justice minister a real fright. Yeah. On that phone call, yeah, he was pretty upset. Hmm, excuse me, mister. Hmm? You really shouldn't be mean like that. What's with that? With this lively little creature? Oh, this little doggy is the warrior who kept who keeps Camilla safe, or he would be if he was actually still full of life. Camilla, God heavens, God's heaven, God's in heaven! <laughs> what a terrible thing! That poor little girl taken hostage. It's a cruel twist of fate, indeed. Wait a minute, uh, Miss Camilla is a hostage. Yes, we're sorry, little, uh, sorry, little warrior. M Miss Camilla, a hostage? What is a hostage? Anyway, Inspector Cabanella, it's time to save your life right now. But you couldn't get very far when you tried before, am I right? But this time it's different, right, Cecil? That's right. With us working together, this whole situation, it's a whole different situation. We'll save the inspector in white, and then we'll go rescue Camilla, okay? Okay, let's hurry up and get through this. Gee, kids, you're making me feel like an afterthought. Poor Cabanella. He's quite the hero, though. Trying his best to save Jode. Alright, so let's get started. Inspector Cabanella is upstairs, so our first step is to get up there. Cecil, I'll go up first and, uh, and wait for you. Okay, bye. He's fast. Okay, lovey dove. We need your help. Carry this measuring device upstairs. It has Mr. Ghost in it, so don't stop, don't drop it. Sure thing. Hey, I'm a pigeon. Trick time! And now is actually a really tricky part. Um, going upstairs, and you can go. You cannot go back down. You have no solution back down. There you are, Cecil! Sorry for the weight missile. I had a real big trouble with that, because uh, I misunderstood what the bullet looks like. And I, uh, you'll understand that. 
Four minutes from now, the inspector will be killed by a gun. So, just jump in there and stop him from firing, would you? Uh, there you go again with that stuff. Besides, it doesn't make any sense. If you stop him from firing, he'll just kill you some other way. Wait a minute, that sounds familiar. Yep, the same situation as mine. Your best bet is this time around is to allow him to shoot and then save Cabanella without him noticing. Phew, it's even worse than last time. Any hoots, jump in there and do something. Okay, I'm ready to jump in, Sizzle. Don't forget, uh, whenever, whenever you want to use my powers, don't uh, just touch the dog icon, the missile icon. All right. So, um, what I'm going to do is let this pass. We are going to see the scene again. Probably, I'm going to cut some parts just to get around with that. He gets angry. No, you can't mess around with all the things. Take notice of all the actions. At one point, Cecil turns back, and that is actually the thought bubble there. We have time to mess around with the scene behind him. Just a little bit. Now, you'll understand why in a bit. I'm explaining this puzzle because that's why I figured, how I figured out. Um, now, I didn't understand how the bullet looks like, and I guess you can only notice this um, oh, I got nothing to say to you. You'll never, you'd never understand. You'll never listen anyway. So basically, um, I guess with missile that he can stop time, kind of right in the, the the spot, and you don't know this. But okay, you can imagine that this might look a, like a bullet. To me, a bullet looks more like the book there, longer, you know, thinner and longer. But the bullet actually looks like this. That's something to keep in mind, and you'll see if um, the doggy stops the time right. I'm not sure if he's gonna do it. This was another condition of my deal, to wipe out everybody who knew about him sick. He's going to shoot! It's too late! Again? I'm going to get shot again! No way, our chances... Uh, our chance is coming up. The last split second, right? Leave it to me. So if you let this happen, you can actually see missile stops time right when the bullet is in the between, in between the gun and uh, de 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 uh, Detective Cabanella's forehead. So, would you look at that? The bullet is hanging in mid-air between the gun and the inspector's forehead. Exactly what I said. Now it's our chance. I'm here. Um, uh, I'm here in the bullet right now. Let's swap this little thing with something else. And as you can see, the bullet looks like this. And I didn't know that. I thought it was really thinner and longer. Uh, and looked more like the book, maybe. What? So it's our only hope. There's got to be something with the same shape and direction as the bullet. I never saw a bullet before. It's such a cute little shape, isn't it? I can check. Uh, I can check out the bullet's shape on the top screen. Exactly. That's exactly what we need to do. If you don't have that, you don't know what's ha going to happen. You don't know that you're supposed to use some kind of shape like that. You'll see. Okay, I got it. Now, what's uh, shaped like that? All right. So, uh, if you see, if you look closely, hurry up now. Swap. The hanging bullet with something else. I know, I can check out the bullet's shape on the top screen. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Shut up. You can treat it with the helmet. It's practically the, sh the same shape. Swap. But, of course, a helmet in the face is quite bad. So we have to find something softer for it to happen. Yeah, time's up. It, that didn't go well. We tried swapping that, uh, what we could find, uh, but we just managed... Uh, we just made things worse. <sighs> not nice, kids. Not nice at all. You put a dent in, uh, in my lovely uh, mask. <laughs> I guess you'd, you'd better look for something softer to swap with. So yeah, and that's actually where you know what you have to do. Um, and it's all timed correctly. It's really, really finicky. Um, you have to be really quick about it from the beginning. 
So let me explain how um, how this happened. So the first thing you notice, and I said that earlier, is that Sissel turns his back. And turning his back makes it so uh, you are able to mess around with the scene. Boom. Done. We can go now. We want to go here. Because we need to reach that helmet and drop it off here. Because we don't want this to be the bullet to be sw uh, to be the the thing to swap with the bullet. Objection! Like Phoenix Wright. Now he turns his back, and that's the perfect timing for us to trick this, turn it around, and get to the helmet, and quickly bring it down. And now he's going to notice this, but. Since he didn't see it, he doesn't know what happened. What's happening? So, next thing is I'm going to use Missile. And missile can reach all of this. What a mad doggy. But you can't. See, there's another. There's a neat hat with the same shape. We can actually swap it and, and put it there. But it's too far for. Uh, too far of reach. So we're gonna use Sissel and wait, because this is going to move. Ebonel is trying to shoot him. And trying to shoot him will make that go further back and come back, but closer. That's a detail I noticed right away, so it's not something that's really that hard. See, it's perfect. We can actually now ghost mode there. The music stopped because we're about to die. Yeah. It's the final three seconds. Now we reach the top, we trick this knit hat to fall on the stairs. Now see the shape? To me that was like a bullet. And uh, I won't do this, but I will explain when it happens. Uh, I'll, I'll explain to you. Uh, trick. Not ghost, I, I can trick things if I'm in the ghost world, that's a problem. What I can do now is use uh, missile which now oh, is too far away. Oh no, it's too far away. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Ghost. Missile, come here. Don't be st stupid. I, I was able to mess, a mess that up. But there's still time. Uh, okay, so now Missile's here. And I can swap this with the book. See? Swap it. What's gonna happen, the, the knit hat will fall and hang there. Ghost, ghost. Now, if you trick this into falling, it will look like this shape, but reversed, so in the right direction. And I thought that was the bullet. The knit hat on the ground was the bullet, but no, it's not. You have to, s to keep it there and wait. Now it's a waiting time. Let's get to work. Okay, swap it. That's it. You can barely see the bullet fall there, huh, but that that's gone now. There it is. He thinks he's dead, but the neat hat was actually strong enough to knock him down, but not uh, not kill him. I don't think he noticed. It looks like you pulled off another magic disappearing act. <laughs> and uh, now I say again, I love neat hats. So warm and uh, most of all soft. Now he says that because we can read a bubble of him saying that before, and I didn't read it. Sorry. Um, I did. I did do all, all right. Did I do all right? Um, you did a fine job, little one. And you saved another life. And I'll keep doing it too, over and over. All right. What I saw just these four minutes gave me all the answers I've been looking for. All our research these past ten years pales in comparison, right, Professor? So you two were working together. That That is about the size of it, yeah. Uh, who would believe a story about a manipulator? So we pursued it ourselves, uh, just the two of us. I'm quite a crazy character myself after all, so I have crazy ideas, too. Uh, okay, let's hurry up back, back into our time, and we have to rescue Miss Camilla. You're right, Missile. And there's a certain guy I have to follow, too. 
Now, hmm. interesting. He's alive, he's well. All broken, but still well. After completing his revenge on Inspector Cabanella, the man, uh, the, the, red, the man in red left. And now, a new story is about to unfold in a new present. So as you can see, we're already 15 minutes, 15 minutes into the video almost. Uh, this is quite a long episode. How are you feeling, you old crazy character? Hey there, Prof! Uh, we're both, uh, both alive! I see, yeah, nothing like it, baby. But, uh, I don't know if I'm getting old or what. I've got a few aches and pains here and there. Used to be, a little thing like an explosion wouldn't bother me. Yeah, right, like I'm going to believe that. So, what, uh, so what, the guy in red is gone, eh? In, uh, just in case, I posted special, uh, posted special investigation units all around the building. Uh, let's just pray for, uh, pray the boys uh, came, uh, came through with, uh, for us. Uh, yeah. Pretty much. Oh, yeah. Damn it. You picked a bad time to not, not to listen to me, uh, body of mine. Ah. What a pain! Trick time. Now we can basically talk to them, but first, when well, it looks like both of their death were erased. Unfortunately, uh, in the case of the inspector in white, I can't call it complete success. But in any case, these two have the information I need to start tracking the manipulator. I'd better talk to them. So it's, it's, that's what we want to do. We want to talk to Inspector Cabanella. If I knew things were going to end up like this, I would have tried to die in that explosion, baby. That way, I could have been dancing after Big Red right now. Hmm. I might be able to erase deaths, but it's true, I can't do much about injuries. But really, you shouldn't talk that way. Yes, sorry, I suppose you're right, I just hate them so helpless. He just, uh, he was right there within my grasp. All our plans were, were resting on tonight. And then this had to happen. I guess he's thinking about his spotless record. It's not too late, Inspector. We still have a chance. Maybe I can catch him. Say, you're right. That's, um, that's not a bad idea. I'll cooperate with you fully. Go ahead and fire away with any question you like, Mr. Ghost. Revenge. That guy mentioned revenge. Uh, revenge against the people who stole his life away ten years ago. Hm, he's a fool. He's the one who made the decision to make to take that little girl hostage and wound up dead. He's the he only has himself to blame. But what about when uh, when he said this? I was murdered by all of you. Inspector, ins uh, Detective Joe, who forced me to into a corner, when the little girl was playing in the park, and you finally you, Inspector Cabanella. If you hadn't done what you did, I ne I never would have pointed a gun at that kid. Okay. Yes, ten years ago, on that day, the Special Investigation Unit was working on a certain big case. We hauled in a young man, an important witness to our investigation. And then I did it. I made two very stupid mistakes. Detective, I'm telling you, I don't know anything about it! Fine, fine! You're under no obligation to talk, of course. But if you don't, the Special Investigation Unit can make the rest of your life a living hell. B but I... Hopeless. 
I just been assigned to the special investigation unit, you see? And they didn't share much info on big cases with the newbies like me yet, and I wanted to impress them. Uh, it was only supposed to be a simple matter of taking this his statement. But I was too green. I pushed him too hard and drove him into a corner and made him lose all hope. That was my first mistake. And then, I made another mistake on top of that. Cabanella got a minute. The chief wants to see you about your report. Got it! I'll be right there. You stay right here and be a good boy now. Always stylish. And that's when I did it. I left it behind in the interrogation room. My gun. How could you? He used my gun to escape. What he said is true. If I hadn't made that mistake, he never would have had a gun to point at Lin in the first place. That's really a really bad mistake, actually. We first found about uh, the manipulator's existence during a certain overseas communication. Overseas communication? For national security purposes, uh, this country keeps, that, uh, keeps tabs on the communication net communications networks. Uh, this particular communication has about uh, um, was about making a deal with a certain foreign country. He said he wanted to. Oh wow! I clicked it. Sorry. That's how we first heard about him. Of course, we didn't know what was. Uh, we didn't know he looked like. What he looked like at the time, and in order to prove these power uh, powers of his. We have them. We gave them to pre pre prediction, predictions. He foresaw two completely prosperous, impossible cases: the case of a man who would sign national, uh, sing national secrets uh, during a live rock concert broadcast, and the case of a man who would take the chief commissioner hostage in his own office. Hmm. Those two inmates at the special prison, hey? He kept tabs on their communications and launched an investigation. And then finally we pinpointed where they were go going to meet tonight and staked, out, uh, staked it out. Interesting. That restaurant, the chicken kitchen... Okay, I see everything triangulating right now. It all makes kind of sense. The manipulator's manipulator plan plans on leaving the country tonight on a submarine that belongs to the other country in the deal, in this deal. Submarine? But we haven't uh, been able to find out where it's going to surface. It's terrifying to think that uh, would hap happen, what would happen if uh, his powers were to fall into their, ra their hands. Right, highly unlikely they use them to uh, for a uh, very unlikely they'd use them for peaceful purposes and now they have um, that little girl as a hostage Camilla we have to stop him before it, he leaves the country superhero spotless record this spotless record of yours is uh, is it really that important to you of course baby in some ways it's more important to me than life in my life, than your life, hey? After all, it's because of my record that I'm able to get my hands on all intel, as um, as head of the special investigation unit. Uh, because of my position, I get to direct all aspects of the investigation into the manipulator's case. The manipulator case? That's why you care cared about your record so much? Of course. Why else, baby? I just never couldn't believe it, man. Joe shooting Alma. I didn't care that he confessed. There was definitely something more to the story, some secret. I never. Uh, I did everything I could to climb the ladder. Everything in my power. And then I finally found the answer. 
It looked fi it took five year five long years though. The manipulator. He's going to prove that Jody is innocent. What incredible determination! So, as you can see, yeah, Inspector Cabanella is actually a good guy and really good at, at it. He, he, he did it, dedicated 10, life, 10 years of his life to actually help his old friend uh, to escape prison uh, and, and try to get that working. So, it's incredible, actually. Cabanella's determination. There's, only, there's one thing I just don't understand. If you were so determined to help Detective Jode, why didn't you help him escape prison? That's a good question. That's an easy one, baby. Uh, escaping in the pri uh, from prison is a crime. Yeah. I wasn't about to help him commit the crime after spending five years trying to prove him innocent. And he himself asked to be executed, you know? As a man of the law, I had to make sure that the execution was stopped legally. And that's why I brought him before the Justice Minister too. I needed to buy as much time as possible uh, as, as I possibly could, baby. So that's it, hey? Ah, interesting. So basically everything he did was to help. And uh, strategi strategically trying to place uh, the characters where he wanted to, them to be. Kind of like a manipulator of some sort, but a good one. But there's one little unfortunate result of all this. Lin completely mis misunderstood your intentions. Ha! <laughs> What's a little misunderstanding, baby? Well, well, my baby will come around. Uh, give it time. But there are more important things to do with our time tonight. Yes, you're right. Oh, what to do? Can we talk to you? Have you got something new to say? Mr. Superintendent, do you mind if I talk to you for a minute? Yes, I've been. Uh, I uh, no, I have uh, haven't always been a, jun a, a junkyard superintendent, you know. I used to be part of the police. The police, huh? Not as a detective, but as a, a medical examiner, I investigated a victim's uh, cause of death. Okay, so yeah, that's your professional background. Okay, ten years ago, I was asked to autopsy a strange corpse. Hit by a meteorite fragment and died inst instantly. That's what the police report said. Hmm. Okay. There were no signs of life. He was definitely dead. But I never filed any re uh, autopsy report. Okay. And then he's gone. That's because the corpse suddenly vanished. Leaving behind only one clue. Dynamite. No, just kidding. An unusual corpse. Oh, an unusual corpse. I bet that's what I've been chasing all night. Could you tell me more? Yeah, sure. I have an interest in you recovering your memory and finding your true identity too. Unusual corpse. That's the only way I can describe it too. It was an unusual corpse. Uh, he was dead, all right, no question about that, but there wasn't a scratch on him. Not a scratch? But I thought he was hit by a meteorite fragment. You don't understand it. Uh, I don't understand it any more than you do. That's quite weird. He is per in perfect shape for someone who got hit by a piece of meteorite. Um, I was completely uh, bewildered. But when I tried to autopsy him, I was even more puzzled. I couldn't perform the autopsy. The autopsy. You couldn't? What would you... What would you mean? Uh, this couple went in, but it couldn't cut. As soon as I tried to make an incision, it would heal up in the very next instant. And that's how it... Uh, it and that's how it went. And... No scaring, uh, scarring uh, or blood either. So, uh, a shell that regenerates itself. That's really weird. And I never had the chance to solve the mystery. Um, that's because the corpse up, uh, the corpse up and vanished on us. 
The morgue is well guarded. Nobody could uh, could have stolen that body. But there is one way the corpse could have disappeared. What's that? If he just stand up and walked on his own. That is, I say. As simple as that. It got up, opened the door, and walked out on its own. What? He was dead, but he wasn't dead. We saw it with our own eyes tonight. Not even that explosion could kill him. And he didn't even feel it when he slammed his fist on that stove. Yeah, you noticed that too. That was quite interesting. The corpse left behind some data from some testing I did and got some readings from some kind of radiation coming off that body the meteorite piece radiation I used all kinds of instruments but I couldn't determine exactly what kind of radiation that it was oh by the way I stopped before I could talk to this guy okay so all this conversation is new to me some undiscovered types from a world unknown Wait a minute, could it be? That's right, it was coming from that meteorite fragment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, that makes sense. So all this is new to me, it's all new. Uh, I'm seeing all those scenes of that conversation, everything for the first time. I went to the park and tested the spot where the meteorite fell. And just as I expected, I detected radiation coming from the crater. It was the exact same pattern of radiation that the cor the, uh, that of the corpse. Hmm. Could it be if we break that meteorite, it would actually end this body and get rid of his powers? At the time, I thought he was some kind of immortal being. He would have died only to come back to life. I wanted to research research it all in depth so I quit my job as a police m uh, medical examiner yeah because this is all madness several years later I came to learn the connection between my research and the manipulators case thanks to the arrival of this crazy character here oh stop now professor do you want me, uh, want to see me blush <laughs> All right, Kevinell's arrival. It was about a year ago, I'd say. I had the junkyard studying for everything. This man in white came dancing into my research lab here. Hello, baby. How's it going? I heard there were uh, there was an oddball here who's researching Dempsey. Is that you, baby? Such a happy man. Uh, who are you to be calling anybody an oddball? Really? I was investigating the manipulator's ca uh, manipulator case then, and uh, then I heard um, there was a man who'd quit the police force to study uh, to, to study the meteorite. When I heard that. Uh, it was like a meteorite had stuck me on the head. Like light, you know, boom. At the time we were just uh, starting to get lead on this manipulator. We didn't know who it was yet. But we knew he was uh, communicating with a certain foreign country. In one of those communications we heard the manipulator say this. The source of all my power is not of this world. And that's when I I put two and two together, baby. The manipulator case and Temsik were somehow connected. Hmm. Which also explains how five years ago he used his powers to manipulate a birthday surprise a little girl made for her mother. He added uh, that gun to the contraption and made it um, uh, most uh, likely by controlling Camilla. 
I see, I see. What now? So that contraption in the basement here, you built it, uh, built that to try to help Detective Jode. That's right. Jode and I worked together back when I was with the Force. We used the report of, of this case to try and uh, re recreate the device. But there was just one part of it that I couldn't reproduce, no matter how hard I tried. Camilla told Jode it didn't. It did something it shouldn't have made. Uh, it did something it should have. It shouldn't have made an impossible move. Um, I added that part to the device I recreated. I put it a part uh, that would allow Cupid to rotate. Otherwise, the gun wouldn't fire. So that must mean somebody manipulated Camilla's contraption. As a result, we proved uh, to ourselves that the manipulator actually existed. Lynn! Inspector Cabanella! My friend! Hey, baby! Uh, I'm almost dead, but you can come in. Sorry about that phone call. I must, it mu I must have sounded like a real villain. I hated this I hated to spoil your image for of me of that cool cat inspector with uh, you always looked up to is that really the image she had of him now comes the deep part Inspector Cabanella, I'm sorry, I just heard you were chasing after that man all this time to try and help Detective Jode. This manipulator is such a dangerous character. I was hoping you did have... Um, I was hoping you didn't have to be involved. So that's... Uh, so that's why you had me arrested tonight, isn't it? Like, always, like I always say, if somebody is in the way, throw them in the slammer. Yikes. Tonight, I really, I really thought we'd finally had him, but my body gave out on me right at the critical moment. Uh, it's like a cruel joke. <laughs> but a joke is a joke. You might as well laugh. Jode, the minister called off the execution order, and while he's he was at it. He let Detective Jode go free until tomorrow morning too. That's a pretty extreme while he was at it. Yeah. Okay, so pretty much everything got solved. Sorry, I took uh, so long to get here. I couldn't uh, leave. The, I, I can't leave the rest. Uh, you can leave the rest to me. Sorry. <laughs> here you go again. You'll always. You you've always been like that. You make everybody else run around, and then you snoop in at the last second. Jode! I think this is yours. Five years ago, you left this coat with me uh, just before you turned yourself in. You, I promise to give it back to you one day. This episode is really long, I'm really sorry about that, but we're close to finishing it. And he's back. Epic moment! I've been waiting so long, Detective Joe. Waiting for this day to come. Thanks for not giving up on me, Lin. Okay, I'm off then. Good luck, my old friend! Let's go, let's do this. Oh, and um... Uh... This present you gave me, it's just what I needed. Thank you. Glad you like it. Ah, so long, sucker. Cecil, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. You and I have to f go find that man. We need to. We need your. Uh, I need your help. Will you uh, do this with me? Sure, but how? We don't know where the submarine is and the phone line doesn't work. They use communication cables to make their their calls. 
we'll uh, we'll get you hooked up somehow. You'll see. Could you wait he uh, here until we do, please? Okay, fine. I'm counting on you. This true self you're looking for, I bet you'll find it soon. All right, I'm leaving, Inspector Cabanella. Goodbye. It's almost done. I'm not. Um, I'm not who I thought I was. I'm actually further from knowing who I am than ever. But now I don't feel so alone. Each one of us, of his or or her own, for his or her own reason, is looking for the truth. Together, we think we can shed light on these mysteries and drive away the darkness. But it's almost dawn. Darkness will drive away by itself. And we'll never know the truth if that happens. Oh, baby! So, yeah, that was quite a long episode. I won't be um, uh, talking too long now. But uh, thank you so much for watching. Next episode, we will try to chase that guy down. There's 18 chapters, so be ready for that. Uh, those will be the last three chapters. Next episode, episode 16, I hope you'll be here also. I hope it's not going to be one of those episodes and, uh, well, we have uh, one hour and something uh, of episode right now. So, yeah, I'm really sorry about that. Uh, but I couldn't help it. I did it fast and all, but, yeah, you know. Uh, so, uh, anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you'll see you, uh, I hope I'll see you next episode. Uh, goodbye. Have, have fun, goodbye. <laughs>